I am sitting down with Owen Lloyd and Ross Dant from NC State. Um, guys, I really appreciate you being here and, and being open to talk about uh, this situation from the ACC championships that um, got a lot of attention and was was certainly very odd and uncommon for swimming. Um, I'm just going to read from the Swim Swam article that we reported so that everyone knows and has the context of, of what this event was. Uh, you, you both were competing in the final heat of the 1650, otherwise known as the mile, on the last day of the ACC championships. Uh, NC State's Owen Lloyd touched the wall in 1437.04, ostensibly winning the ACC title. In celebration of his victory, Lloyd mounted the lane rope, eventually falling into the lane of his teammate and runner-up Ross Dant, who was two seconds behind. Uh, while Dant was with Lloyd for most of the race, he had finished his swim before Lloyd fell, in his, fell into his lane, uh, but some swimmers in the heat had not that were multiple lanes away. Uh, the, it interfered with another swimmer was the official declaration on the results as the reason for the disqualification to Owen Lloyd, and Dant, who finished in 1439.34, was declared the winner. So uh, again, guys, Owen Ross, thanks for being here. Um, I want to I want to paint a full picture. So um, just leading up to the 1650 in the ACC championships, can you each give me your perspective on how the meet was going for you guys as individuals and just the team as a whole? Uh, I guess we should add NC State won their third men's ACC title in a row and nine ninth in the last ten seasons as well. So how do you feel like the meet was going so f up up to this point? Yeah, the meet was going well. Um, I mean, we went in with the goal of uh, trying to break the points record. We fell a little short of that, but we still had a lot of really good swims. Uh, There's a lot of exciting stuff, a lot of new guys stepping up and getting that good experience before NCAAs and getting their cuts. Um, a lot of the freshmen got potentially NCAA cuts, so that was a big goal of ours to qualify everyone going. Um, I think we had everyone swim at that meet qualify eventually. So yeah, all, hopefully. But I mean, we'll see. We'll yeah. see with we'll see with conference meets. But um, <laughs> yeah, personally, uh, the the meet was great for me. Um, the 500 was a super close race. It was like five of us within the last 50. Um, and the Louisville guy got his hand on the wall. It was a great race there. Um, but it was cool to be on the podium with James. And then the next day, 4 a.m. seeing Kyle win was awesome. Um, and being on the podium with him too was was really really good. So. We definitely were riding a good amount of momentum um, and going into the rest day, it was good. Yeah. Um, as a team, I think we we performed very well. Um, I think one of the coolest parts, at least to me, at ACs was watching the new guard kind of take take the reins, right? Because like I'm on I'm on my way out, uh, Noah Henderson and all the us older guys, we kind of had a collective like, I don't know, like I don't know, aha moment, I guess is the right way. But we know the team's going to be taken care of in this next generation when this next guard comes in. So I think that to me was the coolest part about watching ACs. But performance-wise, I didn't really have a great, the best of meet until the mile. Um, I don't know, it just didn't really feel very powerful or speedy in the water. But it just happened to be one of those meets where you just have to kind of swim through it and know that yeah, you'll be back and back for NCAA's. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and so then just moving through um, again, you mentioned you had a day off, and then you guys are in the sixteen fifty. Uh, again, for those who might not know, it's a timed final, meaning you're not swimming prelims and then finals of the 1650. You just swim it once, um, and then whoever finishes in what place, that's that. Uh, so you guys were in the final heat, which is swim at night. Um, take me through your preparation for that race or, or just your mindset going in, and then ultimately how the race panned out for both of you. Yeah. I mean, me and Ross, we go back and forth every day. Our mile group is awesome uh you cannot miss a day or someone will be beating you uh lance sam flack james ross and all of us just race really well and we have a lot of friendly trash talks so the day before me and ross were going back for like oh i'm i'm getting ready to be you like that kind of thing and it was it's good friendly trash talk and i i think it really adds to practice so we were doing that in the meet as well um but yeah the day before just trying to like do a couple swims get get the that pace locked in that like first 500 pace locked in um and then Dino always has uh, a set we do in the morning uh, that's really, really good and sets us up for success. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of success with that too, and so has Ross. So we really trust what he has um, leading into the mile, and we think it's a good formula. What's uh, the set? 
Uh, I know it has some. It's twenty two hundred. Right? Yeah, it's twenty two hundred. Yeah. Um, okay. A lot of like smooth stuff, and then it ends with some seventy fives to send, um, where we try and be like at like eighty percent effort, but hitting pace um, with really like not too much effort going into um, what we're doing before there. But we do that in the morning, and then we head back to the hotel, watch prelims, maybe get a massage, um, take, take a, a nap, nap yeah. get some good fuel, and then get ready to go. Um, it's really keeping it low key the day before and then the yeah. that in the morning and afternoon before the mile just really not doing a whole lot really relaxing and getting your mind right mm-hmm. i think that's the biggest part about the mile is making sure you're there mentally yeah right? it's a it's a it's, it's huge huge mental 85 mental because the work is already done so um and then you asked about like the actual race itself like yeah we were so back and forth people were saying that it would be like i flip one he flips one like we were really 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 like going head to head there um and it was still a fast field but we kind of pulled away pretty early on um my strategy going in was i know that i have to stay with ross and i know i have to go out with him because his i mean his pb is like 30 or 31 so i know he's got it in him to drop a really good time um and personally my goal was to be around 35 or get the a cut um which i ended up doing but it obviously didn't count but uh yeah i, I think i dino said to me after we were talking um, during one of the conversations that night that he was really proud of how I'd swam it, like, like strategy wise and technical wise. And I don't think I had one or two 27 O's. So I was really consistent <clears throat> building into that stroke and not kicking too much till the end. Yeah. I mean, the way I started that mile is a little bit different than what I usually do. Um, I was a metronome that entire time. I had one gear of like 26 sevens, 26 eights the entire time. Um, and usually my strategy is to distend the 500s by effort so my first thousand was great right i was long i was consistent i kind of i usually take one underwater kick i do one underwater kick and then six cycles um into a flip but i was a little a little off my underwater kick i don't know what was wrong it's kind of happened all week i've been having some issues with my kicking uh, with my lower back but um i lost the underwater kick and then i kind of just went up to six cycles and i just kind of locked in but I wasn't really able to really descend the last 500 like I'm going to at NCAAs. So then that's when Owen pulled ahead of me, pulled ahead of me that last so 300 or Yeah, so. it was like 350. 350. I, I went fully in on my legs. And yeah. Since he, Ross's stroke just uses him more, and I, I have that first 500 kind of single beat kick, I think that's the the difference was in the kicker at the end. And that, that's why it felt so good, too, because it was a really well-executed race. Yeah. Um, and then uh, – uh, so congrats to executing some good races to you guys. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, can you take me through the aftermath from both of your perspectives of the cell, you know, the enjoyment, the excitement also to give this moment some context. Uh, it has become pretty much the norm. If, if you win a big race, you sit up on the lane line, you, you splash the water, like you, you take in that moment and you celebrate. And uh, I think, specifically this was an odd moment just because the mile can be such a long race that when when the winner finishes and the second place person finishes um it is common for the rest of the field to maybe not have finished the race already um so yeah again just giving that context but yeah can you take me through the celebration in the aftermath yeah i mean like kind of the last like 100 or 150 or so like i was like starting to think in my head like wow like i really could win this and like that feeling like building up while you're still finishing and then like finally being able to release and like obviously i like slap the water that's a classic thing i i love celebration like obviously it and like i i like to be loud and celebrate that kind of thing but like it also gets your team riled up which is good um so like it builds momentum and uh it it's fun and it shows how much you care and I, I let a lot of emotion into that. Um, and so I got up in the lane line and obviously I'm really tired. <laughs> I just swam very fast, very long race. Um, and I knew Ross was done and I'd been up there and I, I just happened to fall into his lane. And afterwards he, he like gave me a hug and I was like, this is so cool. We just went one, two. Um, and then I went under my lane. I got out after after everyone had touched i think i got out and got on the blocks um and i was like really really hyped up and it's funny some of my friends were saying like when we were on the blocks we had seen the official raise their hand so like they were like oh we knew like something was going on and then um yeah so really just a lot of emotion uh i i I mean like this is a culmination of not just one year but 
a lot of years of really like locking in and having that dedication and hard work and commitment. Um, so I was, re- I was really proud of it. So that's why I displayed that amount of emotion. Um, and I think celebrations and swimming in sports are awesome. And they, they just add to everything about the sport in a positive way. So um, I, I'm a big advocate for celebrating a huge win like that. And let's be clear first ACC title. Yeah. I mean, this isn't, this isn't routine for you. This isn't something that had happened before. Yeah. And it was my first day cut. So that was also really, really huge. Um, just a cool milestone to get. Um, so yeah. 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 Um, Owen, like I said, I, Owen, I, Owen finished. I, when he's up on Linden, I remember, I think I pointed at him and then, so he fell into my lane and I guess what I was looking, he was to my, I guess my left. I saw, as soon as he found my lane, I saw the official raise her hand. I knew the second he came into my lane, or the second he fell into my lane, I remembered a story that Braden told us about the NC State men's 4x200 free relay. Yeah. One of the guys jumped in while Boston College was still swimming. This is when they first beat UVA back like mm-hmm. way, way long ago. First time they won the relay yeah. in like 20 years. Anyways, okay. he jumped in the pool while Boston College was still swimming and got DQ'd. And I remember that story, and, and I think I was probably one of the first people to see because I saw her raise her hand. And I didn't really know what to do. Cause he was in my lane. I was giving him a hug and I knew he had just been DQ'd. And so then he gets out of the water and I look at Dino and the ref goes and talks to Braden and Dino and Dino throws his heat sheet and starts screaming. Um, and Braden is storming around and I point at and Dino is kind of like looking at us. I point at Owen and I raise my hand like a little bit and he shakes his head, like nodding. Um, and then I think this is when you're going anything. Yeah, I was completely to, oblivious yeah, of all of this. this <laughs> full of adrenaline, full of emotion, like, right. oh my gosh, this um, is so cool. I think, and then you went over to get interviewed. And then when they came on the intercom, I actually got on the block. And this is probably the, I don't regret it, but I probably could have been DQ'd for this. I got on the block and I double thumbs down and started yelling towards the ref, like booing. Um, along with everyone else on the team. And I was just so full. And of, in the stands. Yeah, so I was just so, like, emotional at that point. And the funniest part was I saw Braden, like, storming around, like, telling me to get off the block. Um, but, I mean, I was uh, very upset with that. And I had no idea how you would – Kaiwood didn't see you at that point. But it was a, a heart-wrenching thing to hear over the intercom and to see, like, you after the fact sitting by the dive well. It, like, it took it out of me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I did not watch it live, but I, I know I've, I've seen the replay of it and it's a pretty brutal sequence of events. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I understand the rule, but I also, you know, seems like there could be a modification or maybe a different, um, way to interpret it, but we're not really here to talk about that. Um, so yeah, then just, how do you how do you guys react, you know, after 30 seconds after it had just happened? I mean, and maybe Ross, we can start with you on this one, because I know that um, you, you know, you 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 had won the ACC title technically and uh, and you didn't choose to display that uh, with with your with your podium position. And I I thought that was a really cool thing to do. But, yeah, can you take me through and then and then Owen, you know, just how how you process it and then um, rebound from it for the rest of the session. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so they, they took me over to get interviewed and while I was getting interviewed, actually the cameraman had been following Owen around and James played, who got fourth in that heat and actually went a lifetime best. Um, he was getting in front of the camera and like yelling at the cameraman to get out of his face. Right. So it was everyone and Kyle Ponzer who also told me that he was holding up his towel to try to block the cameras from recording Owen. So it was a whole, all four of us in that heat were trying to do our best to like as damage control, right? To like, how can we not let Owen get all like the negative, like, I don't know, get it all out of the space, let him just be, let him be emotional, not have it be publicized. publicized. So they put the headset on me. I mean, I, if you watch the interview, I'm, I'm very upset. Um, I don't know. It just kind of came out. Like I knew I didn't win. And it would have been wrong for me to take his trophy or not time for trophy medal or stand up on the podium. Um, and I don't know. It's just one of those things where I think it should change. It's a rule that shouldn't exist, especially under the circumstances that we were in. Um, but 
I suck up for my friend, right? He's my teammate. He trains with me every day and he beat me. Like I said in the interview, he beat me fair and square. And it's not my right or my, I don't have that. It's my obligation to stick up for him. I don't have the right to stand up on his podium or take his medal. I mean, I gave him, I presented him his medal when he got back after warm down, right? So I'm, I didn't get a medal because Ilya, the Louisville guy, took the second place one and then James got the third place one. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. All medals and records do is just sit on your uh, bench or not bench, sit on your de- dresser and get dust anyway. So I've got the memory, but um, it was a very crazy sequ- sequence of events. Yeah, for sure. I mean, watching back the interview, obviously I wasn't, I don't remember pretty much anything from the first 30 seconds of what was going on. Uh, I went, I definitely went through like, the stages of grief or whatever they're called. Um, but first I want to say like Ross handled that really, really well. Um, and he's a great teammate and I'm really proud of how he talked about it and his sportsmanship in that moment. Um, and I really appreciated that he, he gave me the medal as well. Um, and for me, it was just like, I mean, you can see like the clip that's been like everywhere. Like I've seen so many articles and videos and Twitter and YouTube and, uh, like you can see literally just like the joy leave my body as I like fell back on the podium and was just distraught and Brayden, uh, smartly like told me to like kind of move away from that area so I could get off the cameras. Um, and he was talking to me and he was being like, he's kind of explaining what was going on. Um, he was just being like, stay strong. Like you still swam that race. Like we just need you to be a leader right now. Like, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll eventually find ways to move on from it. So, and obviously I was still tired. So I walked over to the dive well and I laid down and I was like breathing really hard. And then like, it just like all hit me. And I started like crying because it was just so much emotion, um, going into that. So I was really sad in that moment. Um, and then I think you on the clip, you can see me like, kind of like angrily move away. And I was like, once I got angry, I was like, I just got to get in the water. Cause like, there's nothing that's good going to come of me being upset right now. So I grabbed, I, I walked back to the bleachers, kind of like everyone like kind of got out of my way. I grabbed my speedo. I stormed to the warm down pool that's in GAC, like, um, and I just hopped in and I just swam for about 15 minutes. Um, there was a lot of like, there was a lot of anger in that and motivation. And I was like, I, I'm going to be back. Like I was just having a lot of dialogue. Um, and as I like, stopped on the wall and such there there are people who were warming up for their races and they were all the team was just wonderful and their support of me um and that really helped me get through it too and even after the fact like our parent group is awesome and during the we had we didn't have anyone on the platform diving so um i i went up to the sands talked to my parents my sister was there and i was just getting so much support so it was really awesome to see even from parents on other teams too like there was a time where, uh, so I was still like trying to watch all of our swims. Cause I was like, I gotta, I gotta put on a face here. Like I can't, I shouldn't go away. I shouldn't soak away. Like we still have a meet to ha- do. And, um, I was being as supportive as I could and controlling those emotions, but we had a little break, uh, during like the two breasts where we only had like two people in it. Um, and I went outside, uh, and I was just sitting outside there, like just thinking about stuff and I was shedding a few tears. Um, but one of the one of the UVA parents, I think it was Will Cole's mom. She said she walked up to me and she was like patting me on the back and like that was just really comforting. Um, there was there was just a lot of support and a lot of people voicing like, "You did that. Like, don't don't let don't let this moment be stolen from you. Don't let the hard work and that you put into this race and like you deserve to celebrate." So that was really really good to hear um, from just a lot of different people uh, and. I mean, that night it was obviously like moving forward and I put out that post on Instagram. I was just like, I wanted to let people know how I felt. And obviously I didn't think it was going to get nearly as traction as, as much traction as it did. And that I've seen that quoted on some places, but I think the the support of my teammates, the support of the, the fans, the parents, my, my family, the coaches, Dino talked to me and he was like, we're, we're trying to we're trying to appeal it like, but I'm, I'm like really proud of you. Don't, don't let that go away. So that was all really, really great. And I think it, without that, like it would have been really hard to deal with it, but um, the team really came together and uh, supported me there, which I, I loved. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, you know, I, I spoke with Braden yesterday and he, uh, in, in speaking about this situation, he was like, you know, telling me about how Ross stood on the second 
place podium with Ilya, you know, and it didn't, didn't take it didn't top the podium. And then how you, you know, took 30 minutes and then we're back with the team leading cheers. Cause you're, you know, cause you guys are both leaders on that team. And it, I, I think, uh, when I reached out for the interview, I had seen your post about how you felt about the situation. And I felt, I felt very comfortable doing this or asking for this interview because it seemed like you had, you had processed it in a way that you were able to feel it and, and then you were able to, to move on from it. And so that's, that's a really great thing to have in, in a moment of adversity like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> congrats to you both for, for getting through a moment like that and for doing so um, with such poise and, and just holding your heads high and, and not even that, but just moving through in, in, a, in a way that is healthy and, and um, brings you out the other side in a positive place. Um, yeah. And so now, you know, ACC is over. Uh, I guess also that night, um, obviously that, that was a low point, but then you guys win another ACC title. You know, how did that feel uh, again as leaders of the team, um, to, to help to, to contribute to the team in a big way, um, for, for another ACC title for the Wolfpack men? Um, uh, it's title number four in five years for my class, just the fifth year class. Um, and it feels really good. Like I said earlier, um, I feel like the young guard is really taking the reins and I, I feel very confident that this next generation of kids, not kids anymore, young adults swimming, um, is going to uphold the legs that we have built and people before us have built. And it's just a cool moment. It's like a passing of the guard and it's a great feeling to jump in the pool and a great feeling to win. And I'm happy, right? I'm happy that as a, I guess that's my last ACC, my ACC career is done. I've only got one more short course meet. I am very happy with everything that's happened up until that point. I'm happy, not happy we lost, but I think if we didn't lose three years ago, we wouldn't have the, dri the drive and desire that we do today. And Braden's gonna be able to instill that into the younger generation and tell them, look, I remember when we lost, we had people here that when we lost. And so I don't think we're ever going to lose that meet again, even with Cal and Stanford coming in next year. I think we're going to be hungry to defend our title because this is our meet. Yeah. And Braden always talks about legacy and tradition. And I think as a team, we're really, really proud of the culture that we've been able to maintain. And like Ross said, like I wasn't, I wasn't at that meet when we lost by two points in uh, 2021, but that really oh lit gosh. a fire under I us. Didn't it was by two points. Yeah, yeah two it, was, points. it was. It was really rough. Um, <laughs> and I had to go swim at the last chance meet the next day, and that was, that did not go well. But uh. Uh, yeah, I mean, the legacy and the tradition that I think we've been able to uphold, and like Ross said, like next year the ACC gets Cal and Stanford, and this year, like even like Notre Dame, Dame was yeah. just lights out, and. I sent some uh, thoughts that were just on my mind to the team the next day, and I was like. Like let's let's use this win to build momentum, not just for NCs, but like for the legacy that we've built as a team. And like I I said how like proud I was of the freshmen and sophomores and juniors, those guys like who some of them, a lot of them were it was their first ACCs and they they did a really really good job. Um, and so I I tried to still it was hard for me to fully like embrace that moment of winning. Um, and there, the team is awesome. We were having a lot of fun, so that really helped. Um, and, but I, I still think I was able to enjoy the moment, uh, and it was special. And it's always fun jumping in the pool. It's always fun seeing the coaches do fun stuff. Like Dan Castle did a belly flop, and that got the boys going. So uh, that was that was a really fun moment. I still I still think that I was able to kind of take it all in. Obviously, with a little grain of salt, but there were just a ton of emotions that night. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of how our team did. Um, and we, I mean, we were going into it like, yeah, we're, we're going to win. But uh, I think the biggest thing is that we gained a lot of momentum going into NCs um, because from the beginning of the year, that's that's been our goal, that meet. Our, we have had our eyes set on the real prize there. Um, so I think we gained a lot of momentum from ACCs, and I was, I was really proud of that. Yeah. And then, yeah, like you guys have alluded to, uh, one short course meet left for the season for you guys, and that's NC2A. So, um, I, you know, we were talking about this off camera, but just 
tell me tell me about coming down from a five day meet, especially an emotion one that is as emotional as that one, um, and then just kind of resetting and getting ready for uh, the end of the season and NC two A's. I mean, we've we our first day back, we did six grand. We did six grand aerobic workout. Oh my um, god. Where um we gotta we gotta keep up the yards this week. I think it's gonna be mostly aerobic. Um, obviously with a couple splashes of like, eff- like harder efforts. But we need to build that aerobic base back up. We didn't really none of us none of us really fully tapered before it came down to the meet. We kind of just rested. We all did the same workouts. But we just kind of rested for the last a week beforehand. Um, but this week is a kind of a build back week, and then I think next week we're gonna start really hitting it again. Um, and just really getting back into the groove of things. Um, started lifting again last yesterday. So I think it's just building back up and getting ready to work hard. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's hard after a five day meet, uh, to get good sleep anyway, but just with like how obviously mind is racing, uh, definitely hard to get sleep there, but I think getting it back in the pool really helps. Um, and we're, we're our, our, our sights are set on NCAAs, and um, I think we've all got more in the tank, um, every person in white group, uh, and a lot of guys in black group too. Like when we know that you swim well in midseason, you can not take down as much for conference. Um, so we had a we have a lot of guys who I think will will rebound and do a lot better at NC, so I'm really excited for that. Um, and kind of just this week, like kind of balancing the distraction because um, – I've had so many people just texting me and saying like, Hey, I saw you on the news. Like, it's really crazy how much this attention and the the story has picked up. Um, so it's been a little bit challenging just managing that mental noise. Um, but I think today it's, it's kind of like died down a little bit. And, uh, like even yesterday, like I, I was like at the dentist and he, he had read an article about me. Like it was so just like a weird, crazy moment of like, wow, this really has like gotten big. And I'm really glad that a lot of the stories are uh, shouting out Ross and his sportsmanship and the rest of the guys um, who were in that heat and handling it well. Uh, And it shows, it shows that there's respect between us and friendship. And I, I appreciated that. So um, yeah, but our, our goal, our goal is in season. We're definitely going to get back to it working hard even today and uh just moving on uh and keeping our sights set on the real goal it's been kind of weird because i don't really have that big of a social media presence right i i don't have instagram or twitter um actually do i I do have twitter but i don't check it like religiously at all um so kind of it's kind of i walked into our dining hall yesterday and a couple of guys were like oh your video has two million views and i was like oh that's that's cool (laughs) um so this is all kind of happening like i'm a little oblivious to what's all happening um but I think it's really cool that this is getting attention. And I, I mean, the only good thing that can come of this is the rules get changed or modified. I doubt that's going to happen. Um, but with all the attention that the ACC is getting, I mean, there's obviously a chance of anything. But I don't know, it's a it's a really crazy thing that's happened um, that this is getting this much attention. And it's I mean, it's, a, it's attention for a good thing too. It's like it shows that we what we have as a sport isn't a sport of like. I don't know. You don't want to use football as a bad example, but I feel like a lot of the times in football, it's like a more of an aggressive, like less sportsmanship. I don't know. in between other teams and stuff, but I feel like we as a sport of swimming are very good about holding up one another and things like that and not letting, like, even though he's my teammate and he's my highest rival, you could put it that way. We're still like best friends. So you you're here and you're training with your friends every day. Absolutely. Well worded. Um, and again, I just thank you both for, for sharing that perspective and for agreeing to come on and, and just talk about this honestly, um, and, and give, give your accounts from it. Um, cause yeah, it, it was a shocking event. Um, and I think it, it is always helpful when something like this happens to, to hear the perspectives about it so that people can contextualize it and kind of process it. Um, mm-hmm. and then, you know, like, like you have already started doing move on and uh, look at the next thing. So again, thank you guys for agreeing to be here and and discussing it, and uh, good luck moving forward to NC2As for the Wolfpack. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting us.
You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.